Hello there folks, this is Johnny again and now that our latest album is finally out it's time for a new PC because mine is getting a little bit dated by today's standards and um, with what I do right now nowadays and now that I'm kind of hitting that edge of what it can handle the way I need it to handle it. Um, by the way, if you haven't noticed, oh, <laughs> the album is finally out. Uh, you'll find a link in the description to the Bandcamp site where you can listen to it and purchase it as well as to uh, my YouTube playlist where you can also stream it and really listen to it first, so whatever you want to do. So, uh, make sure to check that out. Now, new PC. Predominantly for music production and perhaps a little bit of gaming on the side. Oh my goodness, this is a, is a subject. So, the first thing we gotta figure out is what is it that we do? Where exactly does our PC run into a bottleneck? How do we upgrade it sensibly? And of course, the heart of a PC or the brain, the main component that we will be kind of trying to decide on is the CPU. So, um, if you are, so if you are one of those persons who use a lot of VST instruments, those are quite CPU heavy, and you notice you constantly run into problems with your CPU load, it's just constantly high, and you also need to get you, to keep your buffer size pretty high in order to make it work. You may need more cores in your CPU, so they can really share all that load from the. Um, from all the virtual instruments. Or if you're like me and you only have the drum library open up, so one VST instrument, and you predominantly record through VST amp simulations, uh, then you might want to focus on higher clock speed to get the latency lower. But at the same time, this is not such a cut and dry answer to this problem. There's a lot of debate uh, which is better, more clock, uh, more cores or higher clock speed and usually both can work out, you just kind of have to uh, really see what do you want to focus on. So in my mind this is kind of a very basic rule of thumb that you could probably go with, um, but just keep in mind it's not that cut and try, okay? It's not like you have this problem, do it like this. Okay, there's not only one answer here, just like mixing. Okay, there are lots of ways in which you can uh, achieve your, your goals. So, if you can pony up the budget, of course you can go with something high tier, like an i7 9700K, uh, which has 8 cores and it boosts to 4.9 GHz, and that will pretty much take care of anything you throw at it. And in this whole thing, I will also be looking mainly at boost clocks and not at the base clocks. Because for me, when I work, then my CPU also does boost. So I want to see what's the, maxim what's the maximum it goes to right out of the box. Of course, I won't be overclocking or anything. I don't want to void my warranty and nothing. So yeah, I just want to have a stable system. So if you can pony up the money, of course you can do that. Uh, but if you're like me, you may need to be a bit more sensible with your budget and you know, see how can you get a more efficient result. So I, for myself, I need to check now, can I go with a lower tier CPU and get by with that? So again, all I'm doing is I'm loading one VST drum instrument and I'm recording and my setup right now actually uh, has gotten has done that pretty well the last couple of years. So all I really need is an upgrade from that. So I don't need all that many cores for what I do. I don't do a lot of multitasking or whatnot, um, except perhaps for when I'm recording here, but that's not too taxing really on the CPU. It, it works perfectly fine, but I do need higher clock speeds. And especially when you're gaming on the side a little bit like me, then uh, for games, higher clock speeds are also a little bit better than more cores, because games are not that good at utilizing multiple cores, but they do benefit from higher clock speeds. 
Uh, so much rambling and we still haven't gotten to, <laughs> to our choices. Um, so what do we have in the mid-tier budget lane and whatnot? So we have the, from the Intel side, we have the i5-9600K. This one gives us six cores and it boosts to 4.6 gigahertz. That's pretty solid, okay? And f where I live, I can get this for 280 bucks. Now at the same budget level, Okay, same price. On the AMD side, uh, we get the, which was it? I think the Ryzen 5 2700, not the 2700X, the 2700. Um, this one also goes for about 280 bucks and it has eight cores, 16 threads, so quite a bit more than the i5, uh, but it only boosts to, what was it? 3.9 gigahertz or something. I'll have to check now, but it, it, it's definitely, that's pretty much the rule. At the same price, AMD will give you more cores and Intel will give you higher clock speeds. So for me, in my situation, predominantly recording with one, perhaps two VST instruments and then also a little bit gaming on the side, the i5 will do plenty well. Having six cores, two more cores than what I have right now and boosting to 4.6 gigahertz is is pretty good. My current CPU is an i5-4570 and so it's a couple of years old now and it has four cores and four threads, no, no hyper threading and it just boosts to 3.6 gigahertz and now the new i5, the 9600K, the base clock is 3.7 gigahertz, so already above that. And then it boosts to 4.6 gigahertz. So that, that's, that's a substantial upgrade for me. Also for rendering, this will greatly cut down the, the render times. That's, that's pretty neat. Now you may think, okay, what if I go with the higher tier, the i7, but the older generation, the 8000 series? Um, well, interesting thing is, I checked it out. The i7 8700K and the i5 9600K are pretty much on the same level. There's a difference in the um, in the cage memory, I think. But bottom line, um, I, I would suggest just just go with the current generation of what's on the market. Um, because that's usually the rule with uh, with tech stuff. The lower tier of a new generation will pretty much be on the same performance level as the higher tier of the older generation. And it will be much cheaper. So uh, there's not too much sense in going with older generation stuff. Just keep with the current generation when you're building your PC and you can't do anything wrong, in my opinion. So. Right here, I already have all the tabs open of the stuff that I'm gonna get me. And here's the i5-9600K, 280 bucks. You know what? Let's get the calculator in there and see what we end up with after the fact. Do it like this, let's do it like this. Okay. See, this is why I need an ultra wide so I can get this calculator ultra big. Now that we have our CPU in order, we need a motherboard that goes with it. Of course, for that, look at the socket, see what it is. This is 1151 and perhaps just go on the Intel side and see what and what's the name of the current chipset that supports the current generation. And in this case, it's the Z390 chipset. So this will automatically have the 1151 um, socket because that chipset is made for that CPU. So, of course, the socket needs to be the same for the CPU. Uh, now, for main boards, I think you, you don't need to go that, that ultra high. I mean, music production is not too taxing. It, it, it doesn't require ultra high performance levels. It's not like video production or animations or whatnot. Those need, of course, a lot of compute power and rendering as well. But for what we do, we don't need to go ultra top tier. We can go with medium to medium high. That, that will do plenty good. 
and it also saves on our budget if we really figure out what do we actually need for what we do. Okay, don't just throw your money at stuff. That's uh, got dust stuff floating in the air. That, that's just wasting money on performance that you will never ever actually use. So for main boards, actually I just need something that, that works and that has good reviews. So this one is five star. By the way, I'm looking at alternate.de. This is a pretty big online retailer for anything tech stuff. This is pretty good. And I'll also be checking on Amazon and see which parts can I get cheaper where. So that's always a good thing to, to keep in mind. Don't just look at one location, look around. You'll notice you can actually save some money if you take the parts from, from different places. So this main board by MSI is 130 bucks. I think on Amazon it's around 120, so I'll definitely get it there. Um, this will do plenty fine. What I'm personally always always look for is how many USB ports do I get? Because I have a lot of USB stuff going on. And uh, this one has one, two, three, four, five. And also USB type C in here. Okay, that's that's good. And of course with the new case. I will be getting this one also has front USB 3 again on top of that so this will do plenty this is this is good and I also have two USB hubs still going so I should have plenty of USB ports to handle all my stuff now next thing of course is RAM we need enough RAM for music production but we also need to go crazy with it 32 gigabytes for what we do, come on, let's be honest. If you're using a lot of VST instruments, a lot of high grade and performance heavy VST instruments, then you might consider going super high on RAM, like 32 gigabytes. But the audience I'm talking to is predominantly just recording guitars at home. We don't need that much. 16 gigabytes will be plenty. Right now I have 8 gigabytes and I've gotten by with that actually pretty well. So it's just now, also that I'm getting a little bit into gaming, that I'm noticing 8 gigabytes uh, is just on the cusp of working for what I'm doing. So to, just to be safe and to be a little bit more future proof, if you will, I know a lot of people in the tech industry, they, they don't like that word future proof. Um, but it's the best way word I can use for what I'm thinking about. Uh, 16 gigabytes will be good. It will it will keep me going for quite some time. Let, let's say it like that. Perhaps not future proof, but um, it will still be good to go down the line. Now, RAM is such a thing. The, the price has gone high pretty crazy last year. And now they're starting to come down. Um, I found this kit by G-Skill for 80 bucks and that's relatively cheap um, nowadays. Usually they go around 100, so I'm kind of weary what this deal is about, but it has five stars and when I read through the comments, uh, people like it very much. I also made some research and they seem to be fine. So I'm not about to look a gift more horse in the mouth. If I can't get RAM for that price, I'm gonna go for it. Also, RAM speed is perhaps something you want to consider. I'm going with uh, 2666, uh, so this should be uh, plenty good. So, moving on. Um, with a CPU that will be loaded substantially, depending on what I'm doing, I also need enough cooling. And for this, I'm going with the uh, trusty be quiet dark rock 4 right now in my current pc i have the dark rock 3 and it's doing really well it's of course keeping the cpu cool as it should and it's also super quiet that's something i'm very very adamant about hold on i forgot to punch in the numbers here why am i doing it? so let's put 280 plus 130 plus 80 let's round a little bit okay and now here this one i i still know on amazon it goes for just under 60. and so so i'm gonna stick with this one okay uh, i have it in here 
right now and I'm very happy with it. So there's re no real need for me to look somewhere else. But I still remember installing it. It's a little bit of a hassle. So I'll be looking forward to that. Now, storage. I definitely need a new solid state drive. The one I have right now is 120 gigabytes. And I'm constantly, constantly running into the trouble that it's just filling up. I don't even do anything and Windows manages to just take up more and more space for whatever reason. I don't get it. I don't get it. So I definitely need a new SSD and since it's been running for five years now and stuff is constantly being written to it and whatnot for whatever reason, it doesn't hold for very long. I imagine it will, it will die sometime soon. So I definitely need to replace that with a new SSD and I'm going with the one terabyte 860 EVO by Samsung. One terabyte should be plenty. It should also last quite a long time and it's plenty of space that will never really get filled up even if I install games and whatnot on there, which, which I'm actually doing. I, I don't want to have my games on a hard drive because loading times are slow. <laughs> I guess I'm just getting kind of, kind of uh, spoiled here. Typical millennial. It's not instant enough. So, that's that. I was thinking of actually going with with an M.2 NVMe drive, which is a newer form of SSD. M.2 is the form of connection and NVMe is the, the protocol it uses for reading and writing and communicating with the rest of the system. This one right here is standard SATA. This is what's been in use for years now, if not decades. Uh, but it still works pretty fine. I mean, NVMe is a little bit faster and makes the whole operating system a little bit snappier. But for music production, uh, in my research, it doesn't seem to give you that many benefits. Also, um, M.2 drives, they like to heat up uh, quite a bit when they are being written to. So... Uh, so I'm gonna go with that. That's another 150 bucks. So now the case, I'm just gonna go again with be quiet because this one is fitted with uh, acoustic dampening and whatnot. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty adamant about that. I want to have a quiet PC because I just can't stand having a constant droning buzz in the background whatsoever. <sighs> it just grates my nerves. So this one is another about 80 bucks. I think on Amazon, I found a version of the same p case for around 70 bucks. Ah, let's just stick with 84 here. Okay, this is just some rough calculations so you can see where we end up. Um, yeah, that's that. I was looking at a couple of other cases that are cheaper, around 40, 50 bucks, but they usually look hella ugly. Ah, I like a very clean, slick look just like this one it's perfect then power supply i punched all the numbers and the the equipment i'm gonna get me into a power supply calculator for pcs um there's one from evga you'll find it when you just google it and 600 watts is enough for what i need then of course i also have the option do i go with cable managed power supplies, which has extra plugs and extra cables, so you can actually decide what do you need and what not. Or do I go with non-cable managed, so everything is just in there. And non-cable managed is cheaper, and anything that's too much in there, I can just hide on the other side of the, of the motherboard tray and what not. So, this should be good. Let's call it 75 bucks. And then lastly, a new graphics card. <laughs> oh man, th this was another adventure, finding a new graphics card. So at first I was like, hmm, the RTX 2060 looks pretty enticing. Um, they say it's for 350 bucks, but nah, nah. When the manufacturer says that's the price, then usually you can put another 50 bucks on top of that. So the, the cheaper runs run around 380, 370 if you're lucky. 
So, but then the GTX 1660 Ti came out, which the cheaper ones I could find are around 270, but they have pretty janky cooling systems. So it seems like the Sotec here for 290 is, is the way to go. Lots of people like it, love it. And this was this really in, an interesting thing. So I, I looked at the mid-tier uh, graphics cards and there I found on the AMD side the RX 590 and then on Nvidia GTX 1660 Ti and also the RTX 2060. And you'll see those are subsequently actually also better than the one before. The RX 590 is pretty good for 1080p gaming. The 1660 Ti is a little bit better or yeah. It is, it is better, not, not just a little bit, but also not by too much. So it is better, and but here's the funny thing. So the, the better RX 590s run at the price of the cheaper uh, 1660 Ti's. Uh, so the prices overlap. And then yeah, you just gotta make some good research and see what can you pony up. You know, what budget do you have for graphics cards? What are you willing to pay? And then really, what is the best you can get at that price? Also, funny thing between the 1660 Ti and the 2060, um, the more expensive 1660s run around 340 bucks. And then you have the 2060s, the cheaper ones, run around 370, 380. So you just pay a little bit more money, but you get very much more performance. Alright, so you gotta see what makes sense. What makes sense? For me, here the 1660 Ti will be plenty because um, the, the most taxing or performance hungry game I'm playing right now is Forza Horizon 4. And right now I have a 1050 Ti. I overclocked it and I'm getting decent results. So this one should do me just fine for years to come. I mean, all I'm doing is I I'm playing at 1080p. I don't need 4K gaming or anything. Uh, but I do, <laughs> excuse me, but I do appreciate good graphics. But it's also why I like to play Portal 2 with a buddy of mine in co-op. I installed Reshader for Portal 2 uh, to enhance the, the graphics a little bit. And for me, it makes quite the difference in just gaming experience. So that's another 290 plus 290. So, and this is basically the price we are at at the end. So I have a maximum hard budget of 1,200 bucks. That's really, I'm not gonna go one penny above that. And then for, for each key component of the PC, I'm also setting me a hard limit. For example, graphics card, I'm not going one penny above 300. And I'm not willing to pay more than that for a graphics card. It's just because you gotta set your priorities, you know? I could go for something cheaper still, but then again, but when I do that, I could st stick with what I have right now. But no, I, I do want to have a little bit more graphics performance, but I don't need to pay too much for that. So you just gotta, you gotta find the balance of what you need, what you want, and uh, what budget can you can you um, calculate with? Of course, CPU, it's the main component of your PC, so you really gotta make your research on that. What do you need and how much can you pay for it? If you're thinking, well, let's just be safe, I'm gonna go with the i7, 9700K, that one is almost 500 bucks. That's almost half the budget I have here, so that doesn't make any sense for me personally. If you can do it and you feel good about it, just do it. Okay, and don't have any regrets about this. <laughs> I, for myself, I'm going with this. So, so when, when this PC is built, um, it's gonna be pretty upper mid-range. It's gonna be upper mid-range performance by today's standard. But that's really all I need. I, I, don't, I don't need high-end performance. Music production is not that heavy. And gaming, depending on what games you play and what you do, you can get very good results with a mid-tier computer. It's 
perfectly fine. For main board, um, go with what works, but don't go too cheap, of course. And then you might run into some some bottlenecks with that, actually. Um, RAM, go with enough, but you don't need too much. CPU cooler, <laughs> you could also ch go cheaper on that, of course, and still get good cooling results, but perhaps a little bit higher volume of the fans running and whatnot, so th this is really a matter of taste. Actually, all of it is a matter of taste and preference, but CPU cooler, I'm definitely going for quiet. So this is what I'm going for, and then SSDs, so see what you need, see what you're comfortable with. Um, case, again, it's something you could go far cheaper than what I'm doing here. But again, I like a clean, slick look, and this case fits perfectly, and it's also fitted for a quiet, um, quiet environment. Power supply, make sure you have enough wattage, but also here, you don't need to go overboard. So do your research, just um, look, look for some power supply calculators, and then graphics cards here too. See, see what you need, okay? You don't need to go high end. If you're going into competitive PvP gaming and whatnot, then you may want to go high end to get that maximum frame rate and a really good screen and whatnot. And so you have a very, very snappy response times and whatnot. For me, I do it more casually, but I do appreciate good, a good looking game. So that's why I'm going for a good mid-tier graphics card. Yeah. That's what I'm going for. Now I just need to wait for my next paycheck and then I have uh, enough uh, money to, to actually buy all the stuff. And we'll get into building. And then after that, we'll get into installing my whole system again with Windows and Cakewalk and Studio One and DaVinci Resolve and screen capture and plugins and games and this is gonna take weeks. Blah. Okay, well, I shall see you then when it gets to that.